Here. I'm there. Jason, uh, you're sitting in Sean Michael's seat. Uh, you know what? Actually, no, the plate's wrong. The plate's wrong. Yeah, this is the last time when the plate's here, they moved me over closer. Oh, uh, I got you. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was moving up in the world. Yeah. Still, still my fault. I just assume this is where I sit. This is, this is your seat. That is correct. Nice. I beg your apology. Hey, how are you? How are you? Mr. Shannon, how are you? Thanks for letting me back in last night, by the way. I appreciate it. Did you hear I was teasing one of the people? Not the short one. Um, the African-American woman. She had this beautiful fur coat. I went, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Is that horse hair? <laughs> <laughs> that's something I would do to him. Horse hair. <laughs> I'm allergic to that. Uh, at the uh, equestrian committee. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. Gentlemen, I'm about to make your microphones live. Hold they on, are. Please. Do, 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 do. Quit playing Pong and start the meeting. Can't do this job without you. No. I'm feeling like I might have to move another ice maker soon. Then I was here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> How are you doing, Jim? All right. I'm a little technically challenged. Uh, I need to call Dave back. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Chairman, the microphones are all live, and we have a quorum. Awesome. Feel free to get started. I would like to uh, call to order the January 17th meeting of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, our first meeting of 2019. I welcome our fellow board members, staff, and um, our intern, Ryan. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Roll call, rather than everybody telling me who's here, we'll talk about who's not. Joey is not here. I'm not missing anybody else. Phil's not here. Huh? No Phil. Oh, Phil, no Phil, that's right. So no Phil. So we got two missing. I'd rather do that. Okay. Next item, business, pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, all right. Well, welcome, uh, everyone, to uh, our first meeting. It's anybody who's watching at home. Um, it promises to be a, a, a busy year for Parks and Rec, and so we'll keep moving into today's meeting. Next item is the approval of the meeting agenda. Comments or questions about the agenda? I would, I know we have um, one person, one public comment, is that right? That Jim? is correct. Oops. Maybe we have two? 
or maybe they're still one. Um, so I might suggest that um, in our public... Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, Ma'am, are you looking to speak at the meeting? Uh, I'd like to... Yes, I would. Okay. Yeah. Would you fill out a comment card, please? Okay. Awesome. Okay, no yeah. problem. Can I ask what is topic it's on? The Parks and Rec. Well, that's, yeah, that's the board. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Great. All right, so that means two, sir. Two. Okay, so I would like to propose that we um, amend the agenda and change public comment where public would have been limited in time to statement on an item not on the agenda to allow them to have a few minutes to um, to discuss with us their cons concerns or comments and in light of the fact they both that we've got two people who've showed up at our meeting tonight. So unless anybody has any um, objection to that, I'll, I'll make that change to the public comment part of the agenda and seek a motion to approve the agenda as amended. We'll make a motion to amend. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, I would like to suggest that we uh, push items A and B under new business down and let these folks speak first under new business so they can uh, conduct their business and then continue on home. Okay, we can Of course, they're welcome to stay, but, you know, we, yeah. out of respect to them. So okay. I'm proposing a new item A new item of a. MOU discussion. Okay, we can do that. New item A will be the amendment to new business. And we need a motion and a second. And a a motion that I hear from... Jason. Second. From David, seconded by Jason. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. In front of you, they have the amendments from the very efficient December 21st meeting of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Um, we'll make a motion to approve. A motion by Jason. We'll second that motion. Second by David. All in motion. favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And we'll move through public comment. And um, Jim, do you want to? Jump to new business now, or do you want to go through the election of officers? Just ask. Can uh, who did the motion in the second? Jason and David. Sorry for the for the minutes. Yep. Uh, if you wish to do so, that's uh, entirely your call. Just for the in consideration yeah. of their time, maybe we yes. can move to new business and attack item number A. For you the can how, you can if you wish move to just that item of new business. Yeah, that's what then. That's what we'll do. So. Um, We'll move to new business to just, uh, for comments for the public that have come to talk about the MOU, and we'll call the first person up to um, Okay, the first speak. person called up is Mr. J. Beta. Mr. Beta, I, I know you've told us this is your first time here. We welcome you to City Hall. Uh, again, the process is you uh, speak in the microphone, give your name and address, and then go ahead. All right. My name is Jay Beta. Um, I live at 2030 Providence Road. Providence Oaks Road uh, here in Milton. Um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for all your hard work. I know governing, as we were talking earlier, is hard. And I know um, that you have done a lot of work uh, on the uh, specific on the topic of MOUs with the city of Alpharetta. Um, and I know sometimes you haven't perhaps found a willing partner to negotiate. Um, I just wanted to kind of, from a citizen perspective, provide a, a personal sort of data point regarding the costs um, as it takes sort of a, a family. I have three daughters. Uh, each one of them at some point have moved through the Alfred uh, rack. Um, I have one in there currently. And um, without the MOU or some portion of the MOU um, or some other legal uh, document, um, it will cost us at least over $1,000 um, an, on an annual basis um, in additional funds to be able to fund um, this one child specific activity. Um, if she advances through the gymnastics levels, it's possible, um, it's not possible, it's actually a fact based upon Alfredo's fee sheet that uh, they are going to be, um, uh, it's gonna be about a 13 to $1,400 difference year over year um, based on the costs. So that's one child and I've got three of them. Um, so our concern is that um, so far that what we have heard is that the MOU in its entirety being discussed, and, and certainly there is a lot of effort on the city of Milton to provide um, certainly external park spaces um, for various athletic activities um, for the kids, which is awesome. Um, I would just like to ask that the same consideration to be given for indoor sports as well. 
Um, and I know, again, I know it's hard. I'm not, you know, saying that you have an easy uh, decision, but just just a reminder that there, there are little boys and girls out there who do gymnastics and dance and uh, what other, you know, w w some other activities too that require an indoor facility. Ideally, to be equitable to what Alpharetta is providing today. My concern is that if you are not providing that, then don't provide anything at all because they are just not going to be attending, right? So, in a case of gymnastics, you need a full gymnastics gym, number of different equipment. Um, if an alternate facility doesn't have that, then there's really no point going there, um, especially if you want your child to be somewhat competitive. And that's all I have. So, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do you, any of you wish to discuss with him? Let's, let's call the second one and then we'll, okay. we'll have a little couple comments. Don't, so don't <laughs> run away, Jay. We'll, we'll get the second comment and then we'll go to a little discussion. Um, I, I bet you can figure out who's next. Uh, Ms. <laughs> Ms. Megan Small. That's okay. All right. Um, and Ms. Small, just start out. Take a breath. Yeah. Get you. Get your. Set. Please, please read your name and your address into the record for us. I'm Megan Small. I live in two five nine Providence Oak Circle. I'm actually neighbors with Jay. Um, I. What else do you? That's it. Okay. So I am a mom of four. Um, I have little ones. I have a two-year-old, a three-year-old twins, and a seven-year-old. Um, right now, we um, currently are in all the classes at the um, rec center, and um, there's eight classes divided up between all of my kids, and it's about $300 per session. And I did the calculations, and if I put them in the same classes with the way it's going to go, in the, in the spring, it's going to double that amount. And that's a lot of money for me. Um, How would it double? It's only a 50% increase. Uh, no, it's a 75% increase. Okay. Close. It's 75%, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so my question is, um, I understand that Alpharetta, you were paying Alpharetta about $500,000, mm -hmm. right, a year. And... Um, why, why did y'all not continue to do that? And, um, also, um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, if you'd like, how about I answer that question while you gather your thoughts? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the city paid... Uh, approximately in, in 2017, we paid uh, slightly over $460,000 to Alpharetta. We have not yet received a bill or paid the 2018 bill. But it's not that the city paid it, it's that the taxpayers paid it. We spend taxpayer money. Since the program, the MOU started, it has been escalating regularly. And we believe once we get the tax bill from the city of Alpharetta for excuse me, not the tax bill, the settlement of the uh, 2018, FY 2018, we believe we will have hit the point that we've given $2.7 million to Alpharetta in basically what amounts to is rent for citizen access. And we're reaching the point we're trying to develop our own facilities. $2.7 million would put us a quarter of the way to our own community center being able to do this stuff in the house. So it's not an effort. Uh, I'm quoted in the paper saying it's not about saving money or cutting costs. It's about redirecting money and trying to um, invest Milton taxpayer money in Milton taxpayer funded out, uh, resources. So the next question is, is because I get that and I love the fact that there are going to be facilities for Milton, but right now there is nothing and nothing was told for us to like even step up. I understand there's meetings and, and things that, that, that this has probably been discussed, but nowhere on a Facebook page or anywhere where the moms can actually show up. I mean, right now my husband is working and my mom had to come babysit my four kids for me to even show up. I mean, this is hard. 
And I know that there's nobody else here, but all the moms that I know are right now, they're cooking their food. They're, you know, putting people to bed. Um, it's just, this is it. the transparency of these transactions of cutting this off has not been very easy for anybody. And um, I know Milton has, um, it's very easy for a lot of people, but it's not easy for others. But anyways, the main thing is, is that um, this, is, this is challenging and I'm also confused of why, thank you, um, the decision was made to do this instead of um, public parks and, and, you know, you bought a golf course. Um, why was the golf course purchased? And if you were planning on making a rec center, um, I mean, when is that, this all going to be done? And we're talking about 10 years, 15 years. And my kids are going to be in high school by this time. And it's, this is a very challenging thing I know to discuss, but how are we going to, um, make it easy for my kids to have a place to go right now? So, so Megan, we're glad you came. So thank you. No, 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 no. You're thank, fine. You're fine. Thank you for coming. This yes. board, um, unlike some others, um, people come when issues matter to them. <coughs> so um, like other boards, we don't have a lot of um, issues that come before us that are full of um, angst. Um, so it's, it's a challenge. Um, but it's because of citizens like you that we get to continue the, the dialogue. Um, it was never our intent as the parks board recommending to the council um, uh, for them to take for, for them not to renew. We gave some really great advice for where we thought we could move the stock the agreement forward. Um, but it's kind of like uh, buying a house or buying a car. Negotiations have to work in two directions and not one way. And that's been a struggle. Um, so it's been hard. Um, and the agreement did expire. Uh, the talks about the agreement, in, in preparing for November's end began last last year in May in a meeting between the Parks Rec Board and the City Council. So while um, while it might appear that it happened all of a sudden, there have been a lot of discussions and a lot of meetings and a lot of analysis leading up to the point where we find ourselves. Um, I regret that both cities decided that they wanted to say, well, it's expired and we'll, you know, we're sorry and we'll keep moving forward. But I think the good news and you bringing your input forward to us. Uh, next week, there is a meeting of a group of interested parties to continue the discussion and negotiation. And I think, just as you're expressing your concerns to us, the same things have to be happening in Alpharetta. For people that played in Milton programs that they chose to, there's got to be the same discussion for those people, um, for Alpharetta residents, to be calling their leaders and saying, what are you doing to make me whole, to bring back what I wanted? So I think that gives a little bit of fire in the belly for those of us to sit at the table next week um, to attempt to negotiate in good faith um, a solution from the problem that we've all created. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand that y'all have been discussing this, and it's probably been a long time to get to this point. I just wish that there was something, because I know that people were kind of astonished that this was cut off so fast, and that if maybe... I mean, I'm, I'm a Facebook user. If maybe if it was put on City of Milton that we would have known that there was a chance that this was even take, going to be taken away, that we as moms would make it a point to come and discuss and be like, please don't take it away, you know, mm. not yet. Or is there some way that we could become a member of Alpharetta, like where we only pay a certain amount of money that it's not such a big jump, you know? Mm -hmm. I know I, I have four kids, but... It is hard to have to tell them, well, I'm sorry, I can't let you do all the activities now. And I know that's a, that's a mom thing, but. Yeah. So one thing you did mention, and, and I want to, um, so we're clear, and, and Jim will correct me if I'm wrong. So it is hard. There's a lot of moving parts in City of Milton, in Parks and Rec, and, and Jim and Tom and, and Ryan is our intern. That's the Parks Department, um, th those folks. Um, but when we look at, uh, you mentioned talk about the Milton Country Club property and in that space. So that so so we're clear. While a lot of people want to think it's all one big piece of parks, that money to buy that property is all from green space bond money that we as 
taxpayer, Lee as residents, citizens, voted to approve. That's all passive parks for the exception of um, the active area, tennis, swim, maybe the building, and, and, and the and, city's working and that on money a plan. Was, and that portion of the land, that seven acres, <coughs> was purchased with different money. Right. The golf course, the passive part of the golf course, as well as the space over on Lackey Road, uh, is being purchased with green space bond money, which can only be used for passive. We cannot use it to build active parks or community centers. Was that part of the vote that we had, I guess, several months ago? That was the specific city of Milton vote? Yeah, that, that green space bond money. Yeah, that was two years ago. Yeah, that's what you voted for. Is that something, is this something that we could have a citizen vote on? I mean, that's. I guess that's where my concern is, is that there's a lot of people who are very concerned and might have had an opinion to vote. So I feel like maybe it was overlooked. I mean, we got a chance to vote on a green space, and a lot of us who chose that green space, if we had known that this was something to vote on, we would have been more active and more involved. I will say this. You've hit the nail on the head. The green space bond was driven by citizen input going to their elected officials saying, we need to preserve the open space in Milton, the rural view shed. And then your elected officials responded. You know, they said, okay, we'll, we'll push this forward, push forward a bond. And that passed by over 80%. Uh, I am not advocating for you to do something. I'm simply telling you that factually, if there was enough citizen input to let's do a bond to build a community center, I think you will find that, um, you know, you, you have a very responsive group of elected officials. I mean, they all live in your community. They are all very receptive. They're wonderful people. And, you know, to try and drive for that kind of thing, that's, that's the starting point. Because that's exactly how the Green Space Bond worked. That's good to know. Anything else we can help you? Yeah, help, thank you. Ryan? And I'm really sorry that thank I'm a hot. No, 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 Thanks, Jay, as well, for coming tonight um, and speaking up about this topic. Um, stay tuned. More meetings are coming, and um, I expect both cities are move, will be um, hearing, will we'll have heard some of tonight's discussion as well, so your time was not wasted. Um, and um, we'll certainly bring it forward to the, to the next round of meetings as we continue to work out uh, new discussions for the MOU. So thank you. You're, uh, you're welcome to stay. These meetings are terribly exciting. <laughs> but thank you for coming up. Wish you guys do. It's especially exciting when we see someone new coming up. Because we really do want, we really do want you folks engaged. Oh, so, and as a reminder, you can watch us every month at home as this meeting is broadcast live. So you don't have to be here to, to participate. You, you have to be here to speak up. But as we move forward, you're certainly free to watch us. Thank you for your ratings yeah. driven. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> My ratings drop, don't you? <laughs> Zero dollar salary. Okay, guys, we're, we are live. Awesome. Um, okay, so that takes care of item A under new business, and now we'll move back to election of officers. Election of officers is a uh, annual event for this board, and... Um, um, Jim has laid out for us uh, positions and roles. I, I, um, one question, Jim, for you in the uh, agenda: committee appointments. We, since we uh, such as working with Hopewell Baseball and oh, those uh, yeah, six. committee. Got it, John. So uh, I'll open the floor for the discussion of election of officers. Entertaining pos a motion for the position of chairman. Well, I think Scott, you're doing a wonderful job. I make a motion that Scott continues as chairman of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Okay. I second the motion. Motion by Ron, second by Jason. I'm skipping all that other in stuff. In favor? 
Okay. Any other nominees? No, any other nominees? Okay. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention, four and one abstention. I certainly wouldn't vote. Thank you very much. Let's repeat uh, this process for the vice chairman. I'll open up the floor to nominations for vice chair. Who is the vice chair? Abstain. He abstained. Oh, yeah. Shannon abstained. I make a motion for uh, Dave Shannon to remain the vice chair. A motion by a second. Jason, second by Ron for Jason or for uh, David to stay as vice chair. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Dave, did you vote for yourself? Oh, it's terrible. I'm sorry? Dave no. abstained? Yeah, of course. Okay. okay uh, secretary, open the floor to an up. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> I will I will open the floor for nomination for the position of secretary of the Parks and Rec Board. I will nominate my good friend Joey. <laughs> I second. I would I would third that. Uh, fantastic third. job. He um, does a fantastic job. We have job. a motion and a second for Joey Costanza's uh, position of secretary of the Parks and Rec Board. Any other nominations from the floor? <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 He's going to love Congra that. Congratulations, Joey. Who were the motion and seconds again? Uh, that was um, Jason and Ron. And Ron. Now we will move to committee appointments for the coming year. Our um, existing standing committees are Hopewell Baseball and Eagle Sticks Lacrosse. We'll open the floor to nominations for Hopewell Baseball as our liaison. Okay, you baseball guys down there. I make a motion for Sean Michael to be our uh, Hopewell Baseball. Motion by Jason. Do I, we'll Ron second offers that. a second. Do I hear any other nominations for Hopewell Baseball Committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 That takes care of Hopewell. Thanks again, Sean Michael. And uh, last committee of record at the moment, Eagle Sticks Lacrosse. Open the floor for a nomination for Eagle Sticks liaison. Um, want to do it? Not it now. Myself and Joey both do it now. Okay. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can stay there. Yeah. I'll open the floor to a nomination for Eagle Sticks. That was not Joey. Yeah, but Joey and I do it. No. Give it to him again. You guys want to keep it as is or? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Is it both of you guys? Both of you yeah, guys. Yeah, both Joe and I do it. Yeah. Do I, hear nom do I hear a nomination? I make a nomination for Joey and Jason to continue as Eagle Sticks. A motion by Sean Michael. A second. Second by Ron Hill for Joey and Jason to continue in the committee role for Eagle Sticks. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Yeah, Jason. Good job. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Committee reports. <coughs> Next item of business, item number seven. Uh, Eagle sticks. Anything since without Joey here, Jason? Anything to uh, share? They are all in full swing. So the season starts in a couple weeks. Coaches meeting uh, set for the twenty sixth uh, of January. Is that a Saturday? It's Saturday. It's actually going to be here at the um, across the way over there. On Saturday, you're going to be on that 26th? I think so. Yeah. Uh, okay, just uh, please remind me as we get closer to it. I think uh, okay. you're, you're using it. I've got to make sure that we have that reserved for you guys. Got it. Okay. Uh, so uh, everything's going, is, is moving forward into the spring. So awesome. Coaches' meetings and teams and practice schedules are set. So how, we're, we're ready to rock and roll in a couple of weeks. How was participation for the spring registration compared to last year? That I don't have. I okay. think they're still taking some folks in. Okay. So I don't think Fair those enough. are number uh, finalized. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Sean Michael, you want to talk to us about Hopewell Baseball? Uh, the regular registration period has ended. Um, 
uh, I believe that they are above what they were last year um, in, in overall participation. They are looking, at least in the age groups that I'm uh, part, uh, uh, the, the seven years and the nine and ten, they're looking for extra coaches. Uh, so I think that they've uh, got a very high uh, participation this year. Uh, they are doing evaluations 26th and 27th of next week. Uh, so the program uh, should be getting underway in a couple of weeks. They're finalizing practice schedules and, and all that with, with uh, the coach's request and, and when they can make it. But they are moving forward. Awesome. Remember some very cold days out on the ballpark. <clears throat> cold and rainy usually. It's cold and rainy. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Uh, thanks, guys, for those reports. Um, any unfinished business? I don't think none on the There's agenda. There's no unfinished business, Mr. Chair. So let's move to new business item B, discussion of a proposed citywide master plan. Mr. Craig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sean Michael, you may not be aware, uh, but for the over a year, we have been working on a new master plan for parks and recreation for the entire city. That process started in 2017, uh, and we started making presentations on it in 2018, and we had some challenges in terms of uh, direction that we were going. So we pulled it back, and we have reworked it, and uh, this coming meeting for us next month, you will be asked to vote on this. I will get this to you by the end of January. Let me be very straight with you. This is a comprehensive plan. It's over 200 pages long. Uh, I am respectfully requesting all of you to put in the diligence to look at the plan. Uh, now, I'll tell you a lot of the pages are, you know, showing the proof of where the data is coming from and things like that. But what we're doing here is we're creating the guidebook for Parks and Rec through the year 2027. It shows a picture of where we're at and where we need to go and how to get there. We have worked very hard on this project. Your input is critical. Assuming that the board is, uh, receives a, that this receives a favorable vote from the board, the intention is to present it to council at the March workshop. And that March workshop, uh, certainly if you can be there, it would be appreciated, but it's not mandatory, but that will be March 11. You know what date that is in March? That is a Monday. That's a Monday. What, what was the? March 11. Okay. I will send you out notifications of this because council clearly has gotten to the point now that they're comfortable asking this Parks and Rec Board for feedback. When, um, so we'll get a document. We'll get the chance to review it individually. When we come to our meeting next month, when we come to our meeting next month, will your consultants be here or are they going to answer they questions? They will be that here. We, the consultants will be here. And at that point, so I assume that we'll all have a few questions of some sort. Are we materially changing what's developed or we're just providing a little bit of fine-tuning of direction? What are it, you, it, it, what's just trying to be clear most, on what you expect of us. Um, the, the biggest changes is that previously it had spoken on the idea of the first starting point is putting active fields up at Birmingham. There is now a different strategy that is proposed. Okay. A strategy that I will tell you, uh, I'm going to speak on a little bit because we actually have started doing it. All right. Uh, it doesn't eliminate, you know, Birmingham Park as a potential, but it emphasizes starting in other places where there's land available that the trees are cut down and already and things gotcha. like that. Okay. All right. It tries to be environmentally uh, less impactful. Impactful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 
Good. So that's the biggest single change. Fair enough. All right. Um, so I ask all of you, uh, and we'll need to reach out to Joey and Phil. You know, this is a meeting uh, next next Parks and Rec board meeting. This is when we really need you at. If there's any possibility of adjusting your schedules to make sure you can be here, that'd be greatly appreciated. Got it. Awesome. Not, we start spring break that day, so I'll be available. Well, the the Parks and Rec board meeting is the one I'm telling you. I'm yeah, the 21st of February. Right. And that is, yeah, that is the February. 21st of February. Right. That's our next Parks and Rec board meeting. Okay. And then, of course, if you can come to the uh, council meeting, that the Got workshop, it. that'd be great. Hmm? Awesome. All right. Okay. Appreciate that. Uh, next item under new business is discussion of new program partners. I probably should have put this down under uh, old business because this is something we've talked about once before. Um, we are looking to find other ways to sign on program partners. We have the traditional model, and some of you may recall we talked about this, and the idea of going to existing entities, uh, businesses in Milton, or perhaps outside Milton, but Milton first, and see if we can negotiate with them to let them be a program partner to the city. So, for example, uh, Ryan's been trying to find a gymnasium. You know, that mom was just up here talking about the impact. What if we can go to a business partner and say, um, negotiate a discount for a Milton resident? We're not looking for any commission back because mm -hmm. they're providing all the resources. We're not the landlord. But we become the conduit uh, to funnel customers to you. And we had talked about this before, and uh, but at the time we really hadn't done anything on that. And I want to get your thoughts on that as an idea to move quicker is the whole goal. Because she's right. It would take about a year for a decision to, you know, go to make a bond and then get it passed and then building, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen quick. Right. This is an effort to shortcut it. And I want to know from you guys what your thoughts are. It's different. And this is where I'm asking for a discussion and your points, your thoughts. I'll lead off. I'm all for it. So in a pre previous life of mine, uh, I did a lot of this partnership type stuff um, through uh, both uh, YMCAs as well as through... Um, other counties here in Georgia, where essentially they are um, giving them a, a reduced price mm -hmm. for their ability to market, right? So it was included; it would be included as a, a their stamp of approval, essentially. And you know, again, this was um, 15 years ago, where they still put, you know, there was the Parks and Rec book that you got, and everybody looked through it to figure out what programs their kid wanted to go to, right? Um, and, and so that's to get access into that. Uh, and it worked very well for uh, me as what would we would consider a program provider, and I think it worked really well for them. They were very happy. So um, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great way for us to bring in additional um, uh, programs for our our, uh, our citizens. So I, I would be very much in favor of it. She didn't uh, by any chance mention what programs her kids were in, did she? Gymnastics. No. Her, I thought she was... Uh, Jay, I know it was gymnastics. I, thought, yeah, I think it was a lot of the, the programs at the rec center because it sounded like she had younger children. Had younger so yep. yeah. you know, things during the day that Anything they could do. Anything at the rec center. Yeah. yeah. And it could have been gymnastics, but yeah. I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't think she... she right. specified. It may, it may have been one of them. But yeah. she didn't I'm, I'm just looking at the age of her kids. I mean, you know, the two and the three year olds. Um, just, I guess they could be taking gymnastics. Yes, but, they do uh, have a program I'm at that age. Yeah. My daughter took it. So, yeah. so one question would be: Is he, is if we're if it, uh, if we're going to pursue the idea is to try and figure out what programs, right? Because you got to be quick about figuring right. out the five, six, 10, 15 programs that you're going to chase because somebody's got to go knock on doors and make a sales pitch. Um, 
So one comment or one question would be, you know, have we figured out which ones they are? Maybe the ones that are impacted in the MOU in, in the near term that, that are begging attention. And then the other question would be, would you do it with more than one in the same sport or the same program? Or would it be like our existing program providers where you're exclusively saying you're the Milton play so you're not diluting the the channel that you might be bringing to them? I, I think the answer to the second question, or at least, would be that we start with one, right? Right. We, whether it be that first year it's exclusive or – but we don't – we don't limit ourselves because there could be a benefit to the citizens to have more than one. Yeah. Right. No, but, I mean, I but at least about... initially, hey, we're not going to pursue anyone else. You're going to be the quote unquote yeah. official or, or stamped. Um, yep. Seal of approval. Yep. Sealed yeah. approval. Because you can get into some logistic things that we've heard in the MOU discussion, like why do some people go to Wills as opposed Correct. to Bell, yeah. right? So there could be you pick somebody who's in the wrong part of Milton and nobody wants to go to that side of town or yep. that and aspect of Milton to yep. take advantage of that one as, as well as it fits the need, but nobody, yeah, it doesn't so I, fit the need. I, yeah. So it, I see a lot of matrix kind of like discussions around, yep. we've given you one and then nobody uses it, kind of like Jay's point, you offer a, solution that nobody wants because what they really want is what they had yes <laughs> and then you're yep. chas you're chasing your tail yep. in that discussion but i think it's a reasonable i mean in light of where we are with the mou right now i think it's a very reasonable yeah absolutely practical solution to a problem that we've got in front of us so jim were you referencing uh you said you know you were going to look for milton first providers so in theory well, I don't. I don't know since I don't have girls or, or boys that are in gymnastics, but or competitive gymnastics. Are there any that are actually in the city of Milton, or would we be looking potentially outside of the city lines to find some of those vendors for activities like gymnastics or whatever other activities? Ryan, you want to take it? Yeah. So as of right now, there are. Uh, to our knowledge, there, there are no gymnastics providers within the city limit of Milton. Um, so all of them really are kind of on the outskirts in the Alpharetta area mm -hmm. um, and kind of that where Alpharetta and... Uh, They're actually in Forsyth County. Forsyth and, County. And they are very close to our limits. Yeah. Right. Um, within a mile as the crow flies, but... Yeah. Um, they're kind of like on the Highway 9 McFarland area. Mm -hmm. Right. But okay. being on Highway 9 McFarland is certainly not convenient to crab apple. Yeah. Yeah. For somebody who wants to run. So that this area gets served by a Roswell type program of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, and I, I, let, let's not talk, limit the discussion just to gymnastics. Suppose we're looking for some other type of program. So, so the question, I guess, is, and, and Tom, you may have insight, is do we. Uh, We've talked about the Alpharetta Rec Center. A lot of stuff goes on in there. Do we have a list of everything? I mean, I'm certainly sure from last year's MOU, the 2017 bill, we have an idea of what kind of activities go on in that. Could we prioritize a, a short list of... In, yeah, I've already taken the the list uh, with the MOU numbers that we got back, and in, in, I'm cross-referencing it with the survey results from the master plan and, you know, how the, the survey had the high priority... And that's where me and him are starting to at least do the research to find out who to reach out to. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how we're starting. Because you want to chase a high priority need. Yes. Not a, yeah. Right. Regardless of the volume that might have participated, yep. Yep. it's got to be as part, front run on the plan. Yes. High priority needs first. Since and, we're spending uh, money. The only thing I would add to that is that if uh, I've got an opportunity, you know, with a, uh, a program a business that can provide a program for us that's in Milton versus one that's not in Milton, I would go with the in Milton one first, of course. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, so, and I might even add that Milton, run by a Milton resident, might have a priority over others, even if it may be just in the Alpharetta area, uh, but it is a Milton resident that is the owner of that business, right? Oh, that'd be great if we could get that. Yeah, yeah, I'm yes. just saying in, <laughs> that that may be the, the uh, you know. So do we know, so one of the things that we've heard uh, that's been talked about here tonight by our public input, I've seen other comments, uh, comments have assured me is a big piece of what's causing consternation in the MOU is people planning for summer camp. Yep. Right, That's so is there... 
and I didn't go back uh, in light of tonight's meeting to, to review the documents about how many people are in summer camp that really use it, but is there a, is, can you give us a number to have a sense of how big that number is for the summer in some, in some magnitude, and then B, is that an item big enough then towards the priority list that that's something that we should be pursuing? Because emotionally we're hearing a lot of discussion around it. Okay. And I just don't know factually if it's our highest need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I got a question, maybe crazy or whatever, but like these gymnastic programs and things that are offered in Alpharetta, are these, be, uh, these instructors employees of Alpharetta Parks and Rec? Or are they going out to these gymnastics companies and just bringing them into their space and saying this is our program? And if they're doing that and we go to these programs and they utilize their own space, is it what we're saying we want to work out a deal where they would prioritize Milton residents, maybe given a discount if we funnel traffic to their place of business because we don't have a building for them to come and teach it in, but Alpharetta, you know, has a building, but you're doing the same thing. You're just going there to teach the program. We're going to send them to your building, and you do the same thing in your own building, and you don't have to travel. But in, in concession for that, can we get some type of break on registration if we direct Milton residents to your place of business? And then it becomes how much increase can, he, can they take, mm -hmm. not he, but... How much right. increase can they handle in, in you know, participation? Because right. that's what's going to happen no matter what. If participation increases, like you're saying, they're looking for more baseball coaches, you got to have people to work the program. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have people to work the program, they may like, Lord, yeah, we'd love to do it, but I don't have anybody to do it. I'm, work, I'm overworked. We're going to run into that issue. Potentially, yes. Um, I, I can't speak with certainty, but I believe that the Alpharetta program, uh, the, the coaches that do their gymnastics, I don't believe they coach at other places. Mm -hmm. um, they, they play it out of the Alpharetta Gymnastics Academy, and they do it in the community center. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, that was a concern that we had talked about is, you know, sure, we might find a good fit, we think, and then they say, oh, okay, well, we're at capacity, <laughs> you know. Most we can't. Private, we we most we can't. Gyms are probably already. They could be filled up. Yeah, because they've already committed yeah. their teams the elite, for next year. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're this year. You are more accomplished athletes, and then the direct centers for yeah. the beginners or whatever. Yeah. So again, we're at a problem where you don't have a building for beginners to work out in. Mm -hmm. To go back to your summer camp question. Yeah. There were. 74 Milton residents served in 17, FY17. 74. Uh, 74. Registrations. Registrations. No, no, no. Registrations okay. is 259. Gotcha. Okay. So that was 74 served. 74 so kids. Mm -hmm. yes. So and several kids going several weeks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So there are 259 registrations. Yeah, registrations. Individual registrations over 50, the course of eight or ten weeks. 52 families, 74 kids. Yep. 259 weeks attended. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I knew you'd have to be right on top of your numbers, so thanks, <laughs> Tom. Um, all of those things, um, important factors to look into as we go to the next round of discussions with Alfred about the MOU. Um, so it sounds like, Jim, from us, a uh, blessing to move into new programs. You guys sound like you're on it from a prioritization of – identified but yet not quite fully approved city needs for their high priorities. So I think you should go out and explore it and holler, keep us posted. We'll look forward to hearing more next month about what you've found. Um, I don't think this is anything we need, we need to vote on. I just needed to get your opinion and yeah. guidance mm -hmm. here. Yeah. No, I, I think, think it's, it's great. clearly there's a need to find another way to fill in the sponge that is – Recreation and vacant boxes in the city of Milton, but you know, retail box stores that are vacant. I mean, these... <laughs> I mean that's the short term solution, I think. Schools, we can't use the school now. Yeah, I don't know. 
All right. <coughs> okay. Um, that closes out new business. We'll move to city staff reports and communications. Mr. Craig. Uh, first, I'd like to turn over the uh, microphone to the newest member here. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Flack. Hey, uh, thank you for having me here today. Um, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I am a uh, kind of a, I guess, my last semester with the University of Mississippi. Um, doing my internship there with the city of Milton here um, and going through a accredited program with the Parks and Recreation with a, as a Recreation Administration and Sports Management degree um, and just getting the opportunity to be able to work and um, to be able to learn the system and then and, and, and learn how to, to better serve a community and see the side of things. And so I'm very, very thankful to be here. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, really. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. We're glad to have you, yes. and I know that Jim and Tom have plenty of work that they'll be happy to share with you in your yes. education. <laughs> They've um, already started. So. <laughs> Ryan will be with us through the middle of May, at which point he will have accumulated enough hours to meet his internship successfully. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're just very excited to have him uh, here, bright young man. Uh, right now he's working three days a week. And then when uh, uh, Bell Memorial Park gets active again, uh, Ryan's going to slide into a role where he'll spend about four, five, six hours on Saturdays making, you know, showing up before games start, making sure Triscapes has gotten things set up properly, mm -hmm. and then just being visible and walking around and, and, you know, just being kind of a, the hands and eyes that we've never been able to have at yep. the park. So I'll certainly go up there on the 26th and 27th to see what a park full of baseball players look like. <laughs> Speaking from experience, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Hmm. Um, any other business? Yes, sir. Okay. Wanted to give you guys some updates on a couple of projects. Um, the shade structure project, the put shades over the playground at Bell Memorial Park. Uh, oh, nice. You may recall we had some concerns about the bid responses. We had five bids respond with the uh, two of them in the range of the uh, mid-130s. <coughs> two were within $85 of each other at 100000 and one was below sixty. And in going with the terms of an ITB, uh, you have to go with the low bidder. The problem is we could not, after multiple and repeated attempts, we could not get from the vendor, uh, the offerer, excuse me, uh, if we were talking the same specification of steel for the poles. And uh, I'll be very candid about this. I'm putting, you know, we're talking about putting shades over a place where children are playing. If the steel fails, we harmed these kids. And we gave the vendor multiple opportunities to answer the question, and they would not answer the question. So our concern then became either uh, they've got an inferior product or we were going to take the low bid and then be hit with a big uh, change order. So the decision was made after consulting with our lawyers that we withdrew that bid We've rewritten the specifications, and we are rebidding it. Okay? Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the lacrosse wall, we're in, we've got the documents we need to put together the specs for the lacrosse wall, hoping to get that uh, assembled in the next one to two weeks and out to bid. Awesome. Once we get those bid prices back, then I do intend to go to our partners and... Uh, you know, say this is what we've got as a city, this is what it's costing, you know, who would like to uh, help out? Great. So uh, if we get a bid out, just from my knowledge, if a bid goes out in two weeks, how long do we keep the bid open? I have to keep it open 30 days. 30 days? Uh, contract, and... contract negotiation typically takes 30 to 45 days once the bid comes back to get the contract in place back and forth. Um, this won't be constructed for spring, unfortunately. 
Do will it be? So my only concern is I just want them digging a hole in May so people see it. Yeah. Right? Okay. Like if that, so, so it starts to build the excitement. It doesn't have to be there. I, I get it. Won't, we won't get use out of it this okay. spring. But it, it's the, when their people are there, yeah. they're digging the holes and they're yeah. starting to do stuff to, to generate the interest. I, I hear you loud and clear, and we will move as fast as we can on this. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Should we send the intern out there with a shovel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it starts. Right? <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Right? Give him a little ribbon cut in and a gold shovel. And, <laughs> you know, a hard hat and you know, nothing around. All right. Um, what, another report I have for you. Uh, we have successfully completed the agreement with Mr. Ron Landy, who holds the lease at the Birmingham United Methodist Church field. Uh, he has so far been a stand-up guy to work with. And uh, he's got things. He has done a lot of work of his own money investing in that field. Uh, we are doing our part. There's, we're working on uh, parking lot, uh, short-term parking lot improvements, and then we also have to do long-term work, uh, light work and things like that. Uh, we've moved over one of our pitching mounds over to the field. We've put in new base anchors, uh, and we bought new bases, and... Ron's put new caps on, on all the fencing. It's really looking good, okay? Um, and uh, just for the record, uh, the lease in the field is $20,000. That's what we're paying. Plus, we have agreed to contribute up to $5,000 to try and renovate or fix the irrigation system. We handle any lighting repairs at the head. So the ballast or the light bulb. Everything below is on the church. So if there's an infrastructure problem, that's not on us. Got it. We handle the field prep in terms of the lining the field and dragging the field. Mr. Landy's handling all the uh, grass maintenance, the cutting, the, re the, the lawn, everything else. All right? Um, and also he pays the light bill and the water bill. So it is a very fair deal. Uh, across the street, uh, Scottsdale Farms, they have a sign now that says baseball field for rent. That was the field that was put in uh, for the uh, Done Right mm -hmm. sports program five years ago, which is, appears to have, I don't know if they've gone away or what, but uh, we were offered a lease there as well, uh, $24,000, uh, $24, no lights, and we take care of all the field maintenance and the grass maintenance and everything else. Uh, so we got a better deal. Right. We, 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 I will tell you we backed into it because we started with the BUMC first, but then this other opportunity came along, and I was able to say, you know what? This guy, Landy, cut us a good deal. Mm -hmm. He cut us a good deal. So all the paperwork's in place. We're moving forward. Mr. Salas is extremely happy and excited, and uh, we're... We're, right. we're moving is forward. It, is it just a one year? Is it? Do we have multiple uh, I years? believe we have, uh, is it three years of renewal? Five years? I think five it's five years. years. Awesome. Five Great. years. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. That's okay. Great. Thank you, yeah. yeah. And that's an example of we have an immediate field without cutting down trees. Right. Okay. <laughs> and it's already got lights. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So that's the kind of thing we're trying to do in the, in the master plan. And it's an example of we can make it work. Um, I have one last announcement. Um, the city of Milton and the Milton Steelers have officially parted ways. Um, it, we, it was a tough discussion, but uh, in the end, things have worked out for them. They, uh, uh, they have announced today that they are moving their operations to Kings Ridge, and uh, we have also put out onto the street an RFP for a new football program provider. Hope to have some responses by the end of February. What's the, I remember, what's the date on that? Do you remember? Uh, the bids are due, the responses are due back on the 21st of February. Okay. There's a period for questions and answers and uh, due back on the 21st. Gotcha. Great. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, other business? Mark your calendar. Show up next month. If there's nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. 
Motion by Sean Michael, seconded by Ron Hill. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. All right, gentlemen, let me shut the microphones off. See you next month. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hold on, please.